Today we will be talking about a very important aspect of plant reproductive biology which is self incompatibility. Now we have been studying pollination and also fertilization and you would have realized that it is only once the pollen grain lands on the stigma it germinates and then it affects fertilization. But sometimes even regular pollen grain which is very much functional carrying male functional gamete is unable to fuse with the, the female gamete and achieve fertilization. So this inability of a functional male gamete and female gamete to fuse with each other achieve fertilization is sexual incompatibility and this is very critical in plant breeding, plant genetics and plant evolution. This sexual incompatibility can be interspecific or in, intraspecific. So when a pistil rejects the pollen grains from other species after pollination, it is termed as interspecific incompatibility. That is, it is between two different species. On the contrary, the phenomenon of failure of a male and female gamete of the same species to achieve self-fertilization is termed intraspecific incompatibility. Now this is also called as self incompatibility and today we will be talking about this self incompatibility in detail. So self incompatibility is basically the inability of a fertile hermaphrodite plant to set seeds when self pollinated and this term was first coined by Stout in 1970. Self incompatibility allows flowering plants to avoid inbreeding and also involves genetic mechanisms which prevent self fertilization and promote outcrossing. This phenomenon of self incompatibility is reported in 116 angiosperm families. Based on the morphology of plants, uh, self incompatibility can be of two types heteromorphic and homomorphic. Hetero means many and homo is one that means in heteromorphic individuals there are many types of morphologies while in homomorphic there is only one morphology which we come across. Heteromorphic self incompatibility that means has more than one morphological mating types within a species and because the morphology is different they can be distinguished on the basis of differences in the length of pistils and stamens. So if there are two different types or two different lengths of uh, the pistil and the stamen then we term it as diastyly or it is dimorphic and it is observed in primula. If there are three types then it is trimorphic or tristyly and observed in lytherum. Heteromorphic self incompatibility because the morphology is different can be assessed without any breeding experiments as the morphological differences are quite apparent and they are enough to distinguish between different mating types. Now in this picture you see the first one that is primula there are two different morphologies one is the pin type the other is the thrum type and we have already studied this mechanism when we were discussing about pollination. So in the pin morphs you see that the morphology is like a common pin head you know the steel common pins which we use in clipping our papers and all. So pin morph here you see that the style is very long whereas in the thrum morphs the style is short. The second picture that is of lytherum there are three different morphologies that is plants uh, here there are three different lengths which are observed of the style and of the uh, anther filaments. In homomorphic self incompatibility uh, there can be several mating types within a species but we cannot distinguish these on the basis of morphology right because all the mating types they are morphologically similar. So what do we do? We have to take breeding tests for recognizing the different mating types it is seen in Petunia, Brassica, Nicotiana. Now homomorphic self incompatibility is further classified into two types based on the genetic factors which are involved. First is the sporophytic self incompatibility which we term as SSI and there is gametophytic self incompatibility that is in short called as the GSI. 
sporophytic self incompatibility is controlled by the genotype of the sporophytic tissue of the plant from which the pollen is derived. So, you know that pollen is derived from the anther. So, sporophytic incompatibility is controlled by genotype of the anther seen in Brassicaceae and other families. On the other hand, the gametophytic self incompatibility is determined by the genotype of the male gamete or what the pollen grains, right? Uh, you know that pollen grain is also called as the male gametophyte. This is observed in uh, Solanaceae, Poaceae, etc. Now, whether the incompatibility is gametophytic or it is sporophytic, incompatible pollinations they lead to a match between S alleles which are present on the pollen and in the style. So, it is basically uh, uh, the S alleles which play major role in this incompatibility mechanism. The process is under a very complex machinery of genes and the first hypothesis for uh, this mechanism was given by Easton Mangelstorff in 1925 in Nicotiana and uh, this hypothesis is also called as the S allele hypothesis. This S allele hypothesis it postulates that self incompatibility is regulated by a single gene. This single gene is S and this single gene has many alleles or it is multiple allelic and these uh, the number of alleles can go up to 40 also. So, we have S1, S2, S3, S4, S5 so on and so forth and pollen grains with an S allele if the S allele is identical to the one or both the alleles which are present in the pistil, then the pollination and hence germination is inhibited. So, this is also called as the opposition S allele hypothesis, right. The two types of incompatibility GSI, SSI, they can be now distinguished on the basis of expression of S gene. In sporophytic self incompatibility, this S gene is activated before the completion of meiosis and products of both the alleles are equally distributed. Okay. In GSI, there is delayed activation of S gene and it gets activated after completion of meiosis. So, if it is activated after the completion of meiosis, the products of one half of the alleles are present in two microspores, whereas the products of the other half are present in the other two pollen grains of the tetrad. So, if we have four uh, grains which are produced, two will be similar and two will be dissimilar. Now, here you see this is a sporophytic system. The S gene specific protein accumulation in pollen grains during microsporogenesis. Now, I just told you that uh, this distribution takes place before the meiosis. So, all the tetrads, uh, all the spores of the tetrad, they have equal distribution of the S gene specific proteins. Right. In gametophytic system, the products of one allele are present in two microspores and the products of the other alleles are present in the remaining two microspores of the tetrad because there is delayed activation of S gene and this activation takes place after meiosis is over. Had it taken place before meiosis, then all the products would have been similar like you can see this one. Okay. So, this is the difference between sporophytic and the gametophytic system. Gametophytic self incompatibility, the incompatibility phenotype of pollen is determined by its own haploid genome. Any allele carried by the pollen, if it is common to alleles which are present in the pistil, it gets rejected. So, in GSI, S alleles are expressed co-dominantly in the pistil. Now, you have to imagine that there is a plant which is carrying S1 and S2 alleles and during meiosis half of the pollen grains receive the S1 allele and the other half receive the S2 allele. If the pistil of such plant gets self pollen grains, some with S1 and the other with S2, none of the pollen will be able to effect fertilization and the pollen tube inhibition will occur in this style. 
Why? Because the pistil also has S1 and S2 alleles and if the pollen is also carrying S1 and S2 alleles then they will not be able to effect fertilization. Now if the same plant gets pollinated with pollen grains which are derived from a plant with S2 and S3 genotype, so only 50% of the pollen grains would be functional, that those which will be carrying the S3 allele because S3 is different and it is not present in the pistil, right. So 50% uh, this uh, compatibility is there. However, if the pistil with S1, S2 genotype receives pollen grain from a parent which has S3, S4 genotype. So, 100% these alleles are different. So, 100% pollen grains would lead to fertilization as none of these alleles are common between the two parents. This is observed in Poaceae and Solanaceae. You can see there, this is a manifestation of genetic control of gametophytic self incompatibility. So, the pistil uh, there is S1 and S2 which is present. So, when you observe the pollen grains, in the first one, the pollen grains they carry S1 and S2 alleles. So, none is able to germinate and effect fertilization. Even if they germinate, they can't effect fertilization. In the second one, the pollen grains they carry S, S2 and S3 alleles, whereas the pistil has S1 and S2. So, only the pollen which have S3 allele can germinate, 50% germination happens here. The third one, the pollen they are carrying S3 and S4 alleles, whereas the pistil has S1 and S2. So, none is common and there is 100% compatibility which is seen here. Then the other type of incompatibility is the sporophytic incompatibility. This incompatibility of phenotype of pollen is determined by the diploid genome of the plant that produced it. This is observed in Brassicaceae. So, there is a dominant interaction between S alleles or we also say that there is a multi allelic interaction due to which all the pollen grains behave in the same manner irrespective of which allele they carry. Like if there is S1 and S2, they will not behave as S1 and S2 individually, but they will behave either as S1 or as S2, whichever is dominant here. A plant of genotype S1, S2 would produce pollen with S1 and S2 allele, but all pollen grains would behave phenotypically either as S1 or as S2 depending on dominance of either S1 or S2 in the plant from which the pollen grains are derived. So, if S1 is dominant then all will behave as S1, if S2 is dominant then all will behave as S2. Okay? Now, consider a condition where S1 allele is dominant in the parent plant with S1, S2 genotype the pollen grains with S1 or S2 would not be able to affect fertilization in pistil with the genotype S1, S2, S1, S3, S1, S4 so on because all pollen grains will behave as S1 and S1 is then common in the pistil as well. So, there will be no fertilization. The pollen grains derived from a plant with genotype S2, S3 where S2 is dominant over S3 will not be able to fertilize a pistil with the genotype S1, S2 because S2 is present in the pistil. But if the pollen grains they are of the genotype S3, S4 with either S3 or S4 dominant they will be able to carry effective fertilization within pistils with genotype S1, S2. In other words, such pollen grains will be 100% compatible. This is happening because it will be either S3 which will be dominant or it will be S4 and none of these genes is present in the pistil. Pistil is carrying S1 and S2. 
So, here is manifestation of genetic control of the sporophytic self incompatibility response. And this is what I have just explained. In the first one, there is no fertilization. In the second one, again there is none because they behave as S1. And in the third one, because all the alleles are different in the pollen grains as well as in the pistil, they are all able to germinate. Now, coming to heteromorphic incompatibility, I told you in the beginning that there can be a dimorphic system or there can be a trimorphic system. Unlike homomorphic system, several genes control heteromorphic self incompatibility. These genes which control the flower morphology and the incompatibility type, they are tightly linked loci governed by the S supergene. In dimorphic systems, length of style is controlled by a single gene with two alleles, capital S and small s. That is, there are two different alleles. So, we say this is diallelic self incompatibility. The allele for short style, capital S, is thrummorph, is dominant over the allele for long style that is small s that is pin morph. Pin morph is the one where the style is long. Long style morphs are homozygous for the recessive allele that is small s while the short style morphs are heterozygous or homozygous for dominant alleles capital S small s or capital S capital S respectively. Here you see this is a dimorphic system in which you can see on the left hand side is the pin morph where the style is long and on the right hand side is the thrum morph okay, where the style is short. Now arrows with solid lines they indicate the compatible crosses that is the direction in which the pollen grains are going to move and land on the stigmas whereas the arrows with broken lines they show that in case this kind of pollination happens it will lead to incompatible cross okay so the left one or the pin morph i said like i said is homozygous for the recessive allele whereas the right one can be homozygous or heterozygous for the dominant allele. Then we talk about the trimorphic system. Tristyly is controlled by two different genes namely capital S and capital M with two alleles each. In such systems S is epistatic over M. The long style morphs are homozygous recessive for both the genes. So that is small m, small m, small s, small s. The mid style morphs are homozygous recessive for s gene. That means it will be small s, small s for all and heterozygous or homozygous for the alleles of the m gene. So it can be either capital M, capital M or it can be capital M, small m. Okay. Short style morphs are heterozygous for alleles of gene S and homozygous or heterozygous for alleles of gene M. Now this one you can see that there are three different styler lengths and also you can see that uh, there are two different worlds of anther each occupying a different level. So in all we have three different levels at one level you have the stigma and at the other two levels are present the two worlds of anthers. So in each of the morph which you see here that the three things, the three worlds occupy three different levels. Arrows with solid lines indicate the compatible crosses while broken line arrows show the incompatible cross among tristylus morphs. Pollen and pollen tube rejection, it is the most important aspect of studying self incompatibility. In homomorphic systems, an incompatible interaction between the pollen and the stigma, it leads to several reactions. The S locus encodes both pollen and pistil specific determinants. So we call these as S determinants. 
pollen determinants of incompatibility are S locus proteins which are held by the intine and the exine. Intine proteins are contributed by the pollen cytoplasm. So, that means they are gametophytic in origin and these express themselves in gametophytic self incompatibility while exine proteins are donated by the tapetum. And since they are coming from the tapetum, they are sporophytic in origin and they are responsible for the sporophytic self incompatibility. Now, all these proteins whether intine or exine proteins, these are suggested to have a hydrolytic activity. A stage for recognition rejection occurs in different systems. So, you have to imagine that as in when a pollen lands on the stigma of a particular species, there is a recognition by the stigma and if it recognizes and it feels that okay this is allowed then the pollen is able to germinate and if it is not then it is rejected. So, this is actually a play of proteins between the pollen grain and on the stigma. The release of intine proteins it needs hydration of pollen on the stigma and hence it requires a little longer duration to set up this recognition rejection re reaction. The exine held proteins are uh, sporophytic in origin and they are readily available after pollen lands on the stigma resulting in faster rejection of sporophytic self incompatibility. So, the sequential reactions for effective incompatibility are first production of S allele specific products in both pistil and pollen, second interaction of S allele specific products in pistil with those of pollen for recognition and third is inhibition of incompatible pollen. So, first of all what is happening that the pollen grain and the pistil they have both produced some S allele specific products and once these are produced these S allele products they interact that is those of the pollen they react with that of the pistil and then there is recognition of pollen by the pistil. And if it is not recognized and it is if it is not uh, compatible then it is inhibited by the pistil. So, it is inhibition of incompatible pollen. Thank you and we will continue again.